What is going on YouTube? My name is Keg, and welcome back to another episode of Clash Royale. In my previous episode, I uh, showed replay and then did a couple of commentaries as well. And it seemed that you guys liked it. I got a, I got a lot of likes on that one, or I got a few extra likes on that one, I should say. Um, and good comments. So it seemed that everyone was quite happy with doing the commentaries. Uh, I quite enjoy doing the commentaries as well. So we're going to step into this episode with a number of commentaries. I haven't even looked at these, uh, oh, I say I'm in Legendary Arena, I haven't even looked at these, at these replays, the ones that are available, but right there looks like a pretty good one, rank 37 versus rank 90, uh, looks like fairly high level players there, doesn't have a lot of views though, but I mean it is, it is only two hours ago, uh, sure, let's jump into it, so that one, Dracula's gonna have the graveyard, not Max, um, interesting deck, Bowler, Cannon, Ice Golem, and he's gonna cut, Come up against ISI or ISI uh, with the giant Mega Minion Tombstone deck with the graveyard as well. So it's going to be graveyard versus graveyard. Let's jump into this battle <clears throat> and we'll see. We'll see what's going on. So we got ISI. Is that how you pronounce it? Issy? ISI? We'll say ISI. We got ISI versus Dracula. Both of them starting out very slowly. No one's going for immediate push. Both players want to wait until they get to 10 elixir. We've got Dracula splitting up the archers down the bottom. No one's really pushing too hard at this point. We've got Iso actually losing one or two elixir and Dracula doing the same as well. Losing just sort of a half or one elixir there. So Dracula's now going hard with that first push. He's going to play the Ice Golem in the front. He's got the Graveyard in the back and he defends with the Giant, which is actually a very interesting defense. Graveyard still does good damage. Okay, now Ice is going to come in. He's got his graveyard in the back. Dracula will definitely need to defend against this graveyard. Cannon will defend perfectly, but that Mega Minion is wailing away at that tower. And he's going to throw the fireball. Ice throws the fireball down on the tower, and just like that, with the first push, first push, he takes down that left hand tower of Dracula. Crazy. That Mega Minion was key there. That Mega Minion did heaps of work. So Dracula was able to defend against the graveyard, but that Mega Minion walked in on top and absolutely took that tower down. Goes to show how powerful the graveyard is as well, because Dracula did damage to that grave, the uh, left-hand tower. And here he comes again with another push. He's got the Ice Golem in the front, graveyard in the back, and a freeze spell as well. Those skeletons are going to do heaps of damage to the tower. Castle comes in with the, uh, the uh, Zap there, saving that tower. It's down to half health, though. But now he's got a reasonable push coming. He's only got five elixirs, so he can't push too hard. But he's got the Mega Minion and the Archers. It'll be interesting to see if he does anything to this. And interesting to see if Dracula defends at all. Looks like he's not going to bother. Looks like he was waiting there to see if he was going to play the Giant. He didn't. So now we've got a surprise graveyard on the right-hand side. With the Giant played in the middle. That's an excellent play. Dracula will defend quite well this time. He's got the Mega Minion and the Archers. That graveyard still does so much damage. And now with the Giant on the tower, it takes that tower down to half health. A single Giant and a graveyard spell takes it down to half health. Now Dracula's pushing in with his Ice Golem, Mega Minion, and the Graveyard. Unfortunately, the tower is focused on the Mega Minion, but with that freeze, it doesn't matter if you zap. He fireballs as well. I think these skeletons should still take this tower down almost the whole way. Oh, down to 1,002. This is going to be a very close finish. Dracula wasting a half elixir or so there. Plays a bowler to take out these archers. Plays the Giant and the Graveyard again. Last time we played this, he did over half damage on the tower. Plays the Ice Golem on the right-hand side where that Graveyard is. Excellent, excellent play. Completely defends against that graveyard. The bowler knocked the giant back so that he went for the crown tower. That was incredible. Dracula now thinks he can play the graveyard completely on its own with the freeze spell. Believes he should be able to get that tower. I'm not so sure if he will. He plays a zap as well to try and get it down. It's down to 174. Will any of the archers focus on it? No, they won't. And Dracula gives the cry face. Wow, another super close match. That tower was at 174. Very, very close. Graveyard versus graveyard. Played correctly. Graveyard with the freeze as well. Played correctly. Wow. Really, really interesting plays there. So let's keep scrolling down through. I will choose something that has a lot of views. So just for the sake of it, we've got Vladdy here versus Fun. Fun Bags. <laughs> That's a great name, Fun Bags. Uh, 188,000 views with five hours ago. So let's watch that one. I literally have no idea if it's going to be any good. No idea what rank these guys are. They're rank 11 and rank 10. So this will be an interesting change where it's not actually high level play. Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. It isn't high uh, high ranked play in terms of their actual rank 9, rank 10, rank 11. But we'll see how it goes. 
So Vladdy, unfortunately, very unlucky with that first play. Vladdy plays the giant in the left-hand lane. And in the right-hand lane, Funbags plays the Prince with the Hog Rider, with the Ice Spirit. He gets that tower down, no problems. Three Musketeers come down in the middle. Funbags needs to be careful here. He's got the giant in the left-hand lane with the single Musketeer behind it. He's got the two Musketeers in the right-hand lane. Okay, Funbags fireballs those two Musketeers in the right, but he needs to be careful of this left-hand lane. A giant left alone on that tower, and the Musketeer survives. This tower will go down. Oh, he's got the zap. He zaps down the Musketeer. Wow, the Musketeer took out that Mega Minion, causing it to survive, which was crazy. You can see a giant pretty much on its own. A little bit of help from the Musketeer, but not much. A giant on its own that towers down to 1129. Looks like Funbags is going for the three crown. He's going to chip away at this King Tower. Vladdy plays the Elite Barbarians. You haven't seen too many of them these days. They're not really a part of the meta yet, but it'll be interesting to see if they actually get involved. Okay, the Inferno Tower goes down from Funbags. Great play. It'll stop this golem dead in its track. Vladdy made the big mistake there of playing that golem with absolutely no support. He had nothing with it. The fire spirit's going to cancel out that minion horde. If you play a golem in the back, you need to be prepared to have a push behind it. You need something with the golem. Otherwise, fun bags can simply play a inferno tower, and that is the end of that. Now, Vladdy. The hog rider is coming in against him. He really doesn't have too much to defend. He's going to play the pecker. Really not a great defense against the Hog Rider. The Pekka is too slow. And he doesn't, Vladdy doesn't have the Elixir to support the Pekka. Funbags can simply play the Inferno Tower and the Mega Minion. He really didn't even need to waste it. Uh, the uh, Elixir on the Inferno Tower there. Vladdy saves up, puts three Musketeers down in the middle, splits them again. This Prince should hit one, and he does. So he's going to take out one. Fireball's going to come in. Hit the tower, hit the giant, hit the musketeer. So we've got one musketeer. Oh, the musketeer on the right-hand side is now dead. Mega Minion goes down, and the royal giant finally comes out. So Vladdy has the craziest deck I have ever seen, in which he has the giant, the royal giant, and the pecker, and three musketeers. His deck must cost about 18,000 elixir, because I don't know how he has won a single game with this deck, but he's up there in the legendary arena, so he must be doing well. In comes the hog rider again. What's he going to play? He needs to put down those elite barbarians. Throws him down. Hog Rider's going to get two hits off, though. That tower's down to 682. I don't know how Vladdy's going to come back from this. I don't think he will. He puts the three Musketeers in the middle because he knows he's out of time. But with the Inferno on the left-hand side and a Fireball coming in, there is absolutely nothing that Vladdy can do to try and take down that left-hand tower. And that will be a good game. Two fun bags taking down Vladdy. Uh, Vladdy, your deck, man. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Golem, Pekka... Giant, Royal Giant. That's a uh, that's an interesting deck. <laughs> I'll give you that. That must cost a fortune. Okay, let's keep going through. That was a funny one. Um, KSA from Arab Nations and Nova Prince from Nova USA, ranked 78. Um, actually, let's go in the next one. We've got a player from Grand Line and we've got Som333, ranked number 7. Very, very impressive. Playing the Graveyard as well. And we have a Grand Line, or oh, sorry, the player from Grand Line, with a Rocket Deck. Let's watch that one. You don't see that one too often at all. So anytime I can't pronounce the player's name, uh, I simply pronounce their their clan. It just makes it a little bit easier. So we've got Grand Line down the bottom. We've got Som up the top, both giving him a good luck to either player. Looks like Grand Line's got the old twitchy fingers. Um... Might have to go and see his doctor about that. He might have some disease quite there, but he's twitching away at those those uh, cards, that's for sure. Right here, he plays the Ice Golem in the left-hand lane. The Graveyard immediately comes down on the right-hand tower. What's Green Line going to do to defend against this? He plays a Mega Minion, but it gets frozen. He needs to play something else right now. He's going to lose that tower. Plays down the log. Should be a great defense. I think it'll go down about halfway, but considering the amount that Som just spent, not a bad defense. Here comes the Rocket. I think he's going to go for the Mega Minion as well. Good rocket, hits a Mega Minion, hits a tower, takes down Som's tower to 22, 17. Som is definitely ahead on Elixir though, definitely ahead on Elixir, and ahead on damage on that right hand tower from of Grand Lines, down to 16, 02. Both of them are sort of pausing for a little bit, don't really have a fantastic push uh, from either player at the moment, they're both just saving up a bit of Elixir. What's Grand Line going to do? He plays his Mega Minion on the left hand lane, right at the back, assuming he's going to put the Ice Golem in the front. There goes the Tombstone from Som. Here comes the Grave out on the right-hand side. And he's got the Freeze selected already. So he waits for the Archers to go down. Freezes the Archers. This has to be that tower down. Is he going to collect every Skeleton? 
Wow, fantastic log, but there's still skeletons spawning. Grand Line played a perfect log, but there was still four skeletons spawning out of that graveyard. It lasts a long time. You can expect that graveyard to get nerfed, and I reckon it'll be the spawn time of those skeletons. Just bring it back one second, and Grand Line would have survived that. He would have saved that tower. It's not looking good for Grand Line at the moment. I don't know who wins this one. We're coming up to double elixir in about five seconds or so. Grand Line's got a lot of work to do on that left-hand tower. He plays the Mega Minion at the back. I'm assuming the Ice Golem's going to go down the front here. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. So, oh, there's the Ice Golem. I feel like that's a little bit late. Bowler's there. Mega Minions wait until uh, his Mega Minion was focused on the Bowler. Rocket's going to come down at the back. Takes out that Tombstone. Spawns Skeletons will take out that Miner. Now he's got uh, Grand Line put down his Mega Minion. Trying to defend against this push. Taking down that Bowler. Taking down that Ice Tower. Fantastic log. Helps against damage against the Archers as well. Here comes the Graveyard and a Bowler in the middle. This is going to be incredibly difficult to defend. He plays the Inferno Tower for the first time this game. Freeze comes down on the rear of that tower. The Skeletons are still spawning. They're taking that tower all the way down. The 1346 Graveyard is so strong. Green Line's got the Rocket selected. He's going to play it. Will this be enough to take down this left-hand tower? I think it will. There it goes. Green Line has his first tower down. So we're back to equal. Now 10 seconds left in double elixir. But this will definitely go to overtime. There comes the graveyard. Wow, Grand Line needs to be really careful there. He just played his log. This is terrible. There goes the archers. Plays his ice golem to try and defend, but I don't think this Mega Minion is going to be enough. He gives a good game. I think he knows. It's down to 499. Here comes the Mega Minion. One more hit from the Mega Minion. Oh, and he doesn't. Wow. Som gave good game as well. I think he knows. It doesn't really matter. Uh, he's going to get it eventually. Just one more golem. Oh, sorry, one more graveyard would, would take that tower down without a doubt. And there's the graveyard. Grand Line throws down the ice golem. Trying to defend. He throws down the Inferno Tower at the back as well, but a single skeleton all he has to do is hit it and it's easy as that wow another super close game i thought uh, i thought that tower was going to go down for sure grand line really held on there he did great defense a number of times but the graveyard very very strong and i just want to point out that is a level two graveyard that's not even a max graveyard that's only level two those skeletons would do heaps more damage when it's maxed out wow all right, we have got, that would probably be Nova Esports is quite a good clan. That would probably be a reasonable one to watch. How about this one? 179,000 views. I assume it's pretty good. We've got NNK from Mega India. And we got uh, Al, Alpalm, is that meant to be? Alam? <laughs> oh man, some of these names. And No Clan, that's a little bit suspect. Not saying he's a bad player at all, but if you have No Clan and you're ranked number 19 in the world, Sometimes, sometimes it has been shown in the past that there could be something dodgy going on, but we might watch this game. Uh, similar decks, similar decks. Both got Archers, Ice Golem, Ice Wizard. Uh, sorry, no, Ice Wizard, Ice Spirit. And Fireball, except NNK's got the Hog Rider. Um, and we got, what to say, Alarm. Got Alarm, has got the Crossbow. So you don't see too many crossbows, certainly this high up. So we're just going to call NNK down the bottom. We got Alpalm. I'm gonna call him Alarm, just for the sake of it. Up the top, no clan. Neither player is really having fantastic cards to start. NNK plays the Ice Golem with the Split Archers. Split Archers seems, and he goes for a surprise attack on the left hand side with the Hog Rider and the Ice Spirit. Alarm playing an absolutely terrible log, missing everything. He should have known that they were gonna go for that cannon. Hog Rider is gonna get three. Four. He gets four hits off in that left-hand tower. Fantastic play from NNK there. I thought he was going to go for the right-hand lane as well. He's down in Elixir. That cost him a lot to play that. Now he's got to be prepared for this right-hand lane. And nothing to support that Ice Spirit. That Ice Spirit was completely on its own. So Alarm felt that he needed to just get rid of that Ice Spirit. It wasn't doing him any good at the time. So he hasn't revealed he's got a crossbow yet. There it is. He reveals it for the first time. NNK must be thinking, what the hell, you do not see a crossbow. He tries to play the cannon, but it's too late. He goes for the Desperation Fireball and the Zap. The Zap will cause that crossbow to retarget onto the cannon. So for that crossbow, he had to play the cannon, which is three, the Zap, which is two, and the Fireball, which is four. Which, I don't have a calculator on me, but I'm pretty sure that's nine. Nine Elixir he had to play to defend that crossbow, and it still did about 700 damage on his tower. That is huge. Huge. Gonna play the Fireball, take out those Archers. NNK needs to defend somehow. Great defense. Plays the Ice Golem at the back. Allowing the Mega Minion to take it out. Also allowing the tower to take down his Mega Minion. Okay, NNK plays a Hog Rider there, completely on its own, with... Oh, no, he's about to get it. I thought he's going to get hit off on that tower. He didn't actually get a hit off on that tower. Never mind. 
So NNK, a couple of archers coming in. Archers are starting to make a comeback as well. There's a lot of people playing archers these days. Archers are quite good, starting to get back into the meta. Anyway, we're coming into double elixir in three seconds. Alarm's got the crossbow uh, selected. There it is. Throws it down. NNK throws down the cannon right at the front there. He's playing the ice golem right at the front as well. He throws a fireball. They both throw a fireball. The crossbow is now locked onto that tower. He zaps it so it'll retarget. And it's going to retarget on the archers. There's a log. Crossbow gets three or four bolts off against that tower. Not too much damage. But NNK has to play so much elixir to defend. So much elixir to defend. NNK there going for the Hog Rider with the Fireball, hoping to get the cannon at the same time, but he didn't. The cannon was placed very, very well. Here comes the log. This is going to do a lot of damage. This is going to do heaps of damage. He's got the crossbow locked onto the tower. He's got the archers in the rear. He's got the ice golem in the front. Here comes the Fireball to take out the archers as well. The tower goes all the way down to 836. Alarm is in complete control of this game right now. NNK is desperate. He's going to throw that fireball with the Ice Spirit. The cannon is in the wrong spot. Wow. Alarm has to play the zap and the log to defend. NNK is panicking a little bit here. He plays the cannon at the front. It looks like Alarm's just going to try and fireball down this tower. He does not even care. Mega Minion in the left-hand lane. NNK is doing the right thing, completely ignoring it. Giving a bit of a wow. I think he's a bit of hating on the fact that there's a crossbow there. He throws a fireball as well. Down to 275. Here comes the final fireball from Alarm. And he takes it down with a one crown of victory. Gives the good game. He was just cycling back to his fireball there. Anything to get the win. And I don't blame him at all. He's worked hard. He was in complete control of that game. Alarm played very, very well. Very well against NNK there. Uh, we are about 16 minutes into this video. What have we done? Three? Was that three that we've done? One, two... I think it was three. Yeah, three. Oh, four. We've done four. Okay, let's go for one more. Just because I really enjoy doing these commentaries. And I enjoy watching how other people play. Certainly high-ranked players like this. Um, I really enjoy their decks. And uh, let's watch another replay here with the crossbow, actually. Crossbow is a very interesting tower at the moment. So we've got a player from Nova. And we've got Pong TV. Um, now, the player from Nova is running the crossbow with the Ice Golem log. So, kind of the definitive crossbow. He's got the mortar as well with the Inferno Tower. So, he's got three buildings. Pong TV's got the Hog Rider and one Alexa Skeletons. Everything else is relatively similar. You don't see the poison too much these days. It's since it's been nerfed, not too much. But the one Alexa Skeletons, you certainly don't see too many of them these days either. So, we've got Pong up the top. We've got Nova playing from down the bottom. Pong's got quite a reasonable starting hand. Ice Spirit with the Hog Rider in the zap. He could play something on that. Doesn't look like he wants to. Nova's going to play the archers in the back. Split again. Okay, now Pong comes in with the Hog Rider and the Ice Spirit. So he's dedicated five to this attack. Nova defends with five as well, just with that Inferno Tower. And he doesn't need to play anything else. So that was an equal amount of elixir spent. Uh, let's see what Nova's going to do. Looks like he's just going to let these two archers come in. And Pong is happy to defend just with the one Alexa Skeletons. Plays his Ice Golem in the back. Plays his Mega Minion behind it. Looks like he's starting to build up. Nova's Mega Minion is only level 10. That's interesting. And he throws a Fireball. Excellent Fireball. Hits a Tower, hits the Ice Golem, hits a Mega Minion. Very, very good Fireball. Okay, the Hog Rider's in on the right-hand lane. Nova needs to defend. Throws down a couple of Archers, but the Hog Rider's going to get one. Two. Does he get three? He does get three. He gets three hits off on that right-hand Tower. That's pretty big. Now... Now Pong's going to go on the attack on that right-hand tower for sure. There's the Ice Golem in the front. Mega Minion's going to take out those archers. Now we've got an Ice Golem, Mega Minion, and three Skellies coming in. The Ice Golem's going to go down, and it doesn't actually take out those Skellies. I'm surprised at that. Mega Minion comes in. The two Skeletons are going to get a couple of hits off of that tower. Nothing major. The Hog Rider comes in on the left-hand side. I'm very surprised to see him pushing that left-hand lane. I think he knew the Inferno Tower was coming out. I think he wanted to draw out that tower. So Pong played four Elixir there to get five Elixir from Nova. So Pong's up in Elixir, as you can see. Now he's setting up for another attack. I'm not sure about attacking into this Inferno Tower, but he really doesn't have too much choice. He needs to get rid of the Elixir. He's just wasting Elixir. So the Inferno Tower is going to burn down. Here comes another Fireball. Looks like Nova's very happy to throw a Fireball at a Mega Minion, as long as it's near a tower. And here comes a, no a Hog Rider with the Ice Spirit with a Poison. This is quite different. And the Mortar goes down in the middle. Mega Minion on top of that uh, Hog Rider, taking that right-hand tower all the way down to 706. 
The Mortar was right there in the middle. I'm not quite sure what Nova was trying to play with that one. He's giving the sad face, giving the cry face. I don't think it worked out as quite as well as he wanted. His right tower is bleeding. It is down to 706. He plays the crossbow on the left-hand side. He's wanting to get that tower down. He's going to play the log as well, try and knock back that Hog Rider. The Hog Rider is going to get two... Hog Rider is going to get three hits off, completely taking out that crossbow. It gets really nothing done. Mortar coming in right in behind it. But all he's got is the Ice Golem. That's the only thing he's got to defend. And the Mortar's going to focus in on that tower. Hog Rider on the right-hand lane. Nova really needs to do something to defend this right-hand lane. I don't think he can do anything. And he knows it. He's going to give up that right-hand lane. He's not going to waste the Elixir. Poison and the Hog Rider. There's absolutely nothing. And the Mortar is going to focus on that Hog Rider. That is terrible. Nova placing down the Inferno Tower right at the front there. He's going to try and do something here. Chucking down the, the uh, crossbow. He's got the log as well. I think he knows this. there's nothing he can do though. That cannon gets burnt down immediately. And Pong, all he has to do is play the zap and the hog rider. And Nova gets completely taken out there. Pong was in control of that game the entire time. Nova really never even had a chance in that game. Uh, perhaps the crossbow and the mortar are definitely dead. Certainly at rank 47, I think they are dead. I think that is for sure. Uh, all right, very last one. I just love doing these. Sorry if these videos are a bit too long. I just love doing these commentaries. It's such good fun. Let's do this. This, I promise, is the last one. Um, you know what? I've changed my mind completely because I saw the Royal Giant. <laughs> so we're going to watch this one with Alu versus Asterix. And I'm watching Asterix because they have the Royal Giant in their deck. And Skeleton Army. That's quite interesting. Um, we have got... A bit of a strange deck from Alu. He's got the Poison, Miner, Ice Golem, Mega Minion... No massive tanks there, apart from the Ice Golem, it's really, which it really isn't a huge tank. Uh, he's got no huge tanks. So Asterix has got the Royal Giant, he's got the Hog Rider in behind, Skeleton Army, Furnace. Very strong deck from Asterix, very, very strong deck. So we've got Asterix up the top from Justness, we've got a Lou Mega, from Mega Minion down the bottom. And let's see, we Asterix has got the Furnace, which he'll play first, no doubt. A Lou, seeing the Furnace now. Throws down the Musketeer. <laughs> Asterix gives a wow for some reason. I, I think maybe because Alu lost a half elixir there, but who knows. So Asterix now plays the Mega Minion and the Royal Giant on the right-hand side. He's going to play the Ice Spirit as well. That's a great defense. Unfortunately, the Mega Minion of Alu is focusing on the Royal Giant. Wow, that was super lucky. That was really, really lucky. If Alu hadn't played the Ice Golem there, oh, and, and a Skeleton Army in the back there, perfect defense from Asterix. I'll be surprised. Oh, he did take one hit. That was a fantastic defense from Asterix. Spent a bit of uh, elixir to get there. As I was saying, Alu played very, very well there. He threw down the Ice Golem, which distracted the Mega Minion, threw down his Mega Minion, which could then take out Asterix's Mega Minion. If he didn't, Alu's Mega Minion was focused on the Royal Giant, meaning Asterix's Mega Minion could have taken him out. Royal Giant and the Mega Minion both would have been alive, and it would have been a big push for Asterix. So Alu... Waiting for his Elixir Bar to be completely full. He sees the Hog Rider on the left-hand side. He's going to play the cannon. A little bit of a poor placement from the cannon. Hopefully that Musketeer will get a shot off. No, the Musketeer completely ignores the Hog Rider. No, it's, as such, Hog Rider is going to come in and get a single hit off. Plays the Ice Golem so that the uh, Fire Spirits don't get any damage on that tower. And now he's going to play the Miner on the right-hand side. There's a Skeleton Army. Great placement from Alu with a Miner. Really great placement. Throws a Poison down as well. He's going to take out all that Skeleton Army and get damage onto the Furnace. Quite a good play there. He's going to get quite a good bit of chip damage on that right hand down. Down to 24.97. So Alu, very good play there. He played the Miner in a different spot, so that Asterix couldn't play the Skeleton Army to counter him. So Alu's kind of wondering right now, right, what do I do? What do I play? He's wasting Elixir. I hate to see really high level players like that. It's only a quarter, a half, hardly anything. But it's a waste. And again, Alu, right sitting on the absolute maximum. Okay, here comes a fireball from Asterix. Throws it in, takes out the Mega Minion and the Ice Spirit. Really great fireball. Now, the cannon is placed in a slightly bad spot. Here comes a Hog Rider from, at the back from Asterix. A good Ice Spirit, freezing everything down. But the Royal Giant and the Hog Rider are going to hit that tower. Hog Rider gets one hit off, taking it down 17-20. That was quite a reasonable push. Very, very slow push on that left-hand lane that Alu doesn't want. There goes the Skeleton Army at the front. He's got the Miner at the back with the Poison. So that Skeleton Army was really poorly placed. So Asterix plays his Mega Minion at the back to defend against that Miner. Meanwhile, Alu's left-hand tower is down to 1594, so they're relatively equal. Um, Alu's probably up one or two in Elixir. He's going to completely ignore the Mega Minion on the right-hand side. Plays the Musketeer in the middle, which is a great placement. Great placement. He can therefore take out that uh, Furnace. 
Musketeer stays at the back there, taking out some of those Skeleton Army. Again, plays the Miner and the Poison, which is going to poison down that Mega Minion. There's a Furnace in a very strange spot from Asterix. He placed that Furnace right at the front there. I'm not quite sure what he was planning with that one, but the Musketeer is subsequently going to take it out. There's a Royal Giant in the left-hand lane. Lou really needs to defend this. He plays the Ice Spirit and the Mega Minion. It's pretty good defense. With the Ice Spirit, he's going to cause the Royal Giant to be retargeted on the cannon. Another great defense. Plays the log on that right-hand lane. I think he's just trying to burn down that right-hand tower at this point, Lou. He's got it down at 561. Here comes the uh, Hog Rider. Needs to be careful. Here comes the Hog Rider with the Fireball. This could be a lot of damage. He needs to be careful of his left-hand tower. Lou needs to watch that left-hand tower. It's all the way down to zero. Oh, he needed to be careful of that left-hand tower. A Hog Rider with the Fireball is incredible burst damage. I've said it before in my other videos. It's a lot of burst damage. You can say goodbye to a thousand off your tower without a drama if you are not really careful and as we saw right then alu lost that left hand tower he was too focused on that right hand one he thought he had it for sure but a hog rider with a fireball man took it took the uh, victory away from alu right there let's open up this free chest why not oh no legendary i'm so disappointed anyway guys that's 25 minutes worth of video Hopefully you guys are enjoying these commentaries. I absolutely love doing them. I'm, I absolutely will show more uh, live battles and replays of my own and different decks and all that sort of thing uh, in the future. There's no doubt about that. Still definitely doing those videos. But I thoroughly enjoy doing these commentary videos and showing off some of these super high level plays and kind of strange decks. Uh, Crossbow, Mortar, Inferno Tower right up there at rank 47. That's a talented player. That's a really talented player. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it there. Uh, make sure you leave a like on this video. If you, if you like to see these commentaries, let me know, and I'll, I'll keep doing them, because I thoroughly enjoy doing them. Uh, as always, guys, subscribe for more videos. Like the video if you like the video, and we'll see you all in the next one.